Hello all, as I mentioned in the previous tutorial, now we are trying to interface our Zbot with a external display. So first we will be using the VGA interface of Zbot to achieve it. Now if you look at Zbot, it has two video interfaces. There is a VGA interface, uh, VGA stands for Video Graphics Array, which is an analog interface actually. And there is an HDMI interface, High Definition Multimedia Interface. So VGA is a very old standard. Uh, it was initially developed for interfacing with uh, CRT monitors. So some of that signals we are still uh, inheriting from that time. HDMI is much more new standard. It's a digital standard. And through HDMI, you can send not only video, but audio signals also. So HDMI we'll be seeing later because uh, it is much more complex and we'll be actually discussing the VGA. Now, uh, even in YouTube, there are a lot of videos which are clearly explaining what is VGA standard, how signals are sent over VGA standard, what are the signals in VGA standard, etc. So I'm not going into those details, but for completion, uh, I'll be giving a brief introduction about this signaling. So first thing we are looking at some of the terminologies when we discuss about uh, video interfaces. So one thing that you will constantly hear is the resolution. So resolution is defined as the product of the width of your display times the height of the display. Okay, So when we usually say resolution, uh, unlike matrices, we uh, specify the width first, then we specify the height instead of specifying height first followed by width. Okay, so these are the old VGA standard resolutions. So the most common uh, VGA resolution is 640 by 480. That means you have 640 pixels in this direction and 480 pixels in this direction. Now later, uh, there are other VGA standards, as you can see, uh, which have higher resolution. Now, these are more popular uh, resolution standards you will be seeing nowadays. These are mostly found in uh, monitors which support other interfaces. They support maybe VGA also, but usually they will have support for uh, HDMI, DVI, or DP, etc. other standard. Now VGA, uh, the maximum resolution uh, supported is this one, 1080 by 920. So this resolution, we usually call it 1080p. Okay, So when you hear 1080p, uh, this is the actual resolution. 1080 pixel as height and 1920 as width. So same way this we call as 720p. This one we call as 480p. So this is uh, Ultra HD standard where height is 21603840 is the width. Now there are uh, uh, higher resolution standards nowadays. You might have heard about uh, 2K resolution and 4K resolution. In 2K and 4K, uh, the width is actually specified first instead of the height. So there should be commercial interest there to give you a feeling like uh, the resolution is much higher. Okay, So in 2K, the width is approximately 2K, but it's slightly less than 2K, and in 4K, the width is approximately 4K, but slightly less. So this is about resolution. So resolution basically tells you how many pixels are supported by your display. Now each pixel, uh, we usually have uh, uh, three values per pixel. So remember, one pixel constitutes of RGB, three pixels internally, uh, physically, actually. Now, next term that we usually hear is frame rate. So frame rate basically means number of frames per second. Okay. So when you are watching video, as you know, it's a series of images. So the uh, frame rate basically says how many images, how many frames are there per second. And most commonly used frame rates are 50 hertz and 60 hertz. Now it is, means you have 50 uh, images coming back to back per second. Now again, there are reasons why these uh, frequencies are there. Uh, so there are some some biological reasons. 
because the frequency should be at least some certain value so that because of persistence of vision we feel the continuous motion now if you have very very high frequency there not may not be any real advantage because of our limitations of our eyes and brains if it is too high it won't make uh, much difference we we won't feel any difference uh, if 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 our eyes are the ultimate consumer of these videos so usual usual standards are 50 and 60 hertz so if you are looking at a 1080p so remember 1080p is uh, 1920 by 1080 pixels resolution and if it is running at 60 hertz and if you have tricolor display rgb each with the one byte so the raw throughput that you are looking at when you are transmitting a video to your monitor is around 3 173 megabytes per second so data is going at uh, that rate anyway this is not a very high speed if you compare with our modern interfaces but uh, it's it's relatively high value now the next question is as you know when you take any computer monitor and if you immediately plug it into your uh, cabinet the picture come properly right uh, how does it happen because it is possible when you are suddenly plugging in the image transmitted by the cpu may be halfway the image but you will never see like your image is starting from halfway or half of the image is coming from the top of the display so that is achieved through synchronization so there are special signals uh, sent by the video source which helps the display or the monitor to synchronize it with the uh, with the video sent okay so we usually have two kinds of signals one is called the vertical synchronization and one is called the horizontal synchronization so vertical sync is basically telling the display where a frame is starting similarly horizontal synchronization it is basically telling what is the duration of a particular line okay so again on the display uh, we have uh, multiple lines right so when you have 1080 here that means there are 1080 horizontal lines so this synchronization enables the display to determine where a line starts and where a line ends so these are our synchronization so this is a, a timing diagram when you are using vga interface so as i mentioned before this is an analog signal so you will have continuous signal going and we usually have three separate lines for rgb values so depending upon again how many bytes you are using if you are using one byte so each rgb can take values between 0 to 255 but uh, on z-board we are going to use four bits per, per color channel so you will have values between 0 to 15 going for each rgb so you have three such lines going in parallel in addition to that you have a separate signal for horizontal synchronization and a separate signal for vertical synchronization so this picture is showing like one vertical synchronization happens after a lot of horizontal synchronization okay so this signal comes uh, one per line so if you are using 1080p one vertical synchronization happens after 1080 horizontal synchronization makes sense and uh, you might have noticed here there are uh, strict timing parameters given what is the length for for this part what is the length for this part etc we have very strict uh, timing parameter so when we say horizontal synchronization even here you can see this is the synchronization pulse actual pulse and we need some time period before that signal which is called as a front porch we need some time after that uh, synchronization which is called the back porch again all these requirements uh, initially came from the crt era but we are still carrying over those specifications similarly for vertical synchronization also you have this front porch part and the back porch part okay so there are strict uh, timing uh, requirement how long each of these signal should be so to synchronize uh, this timing we need a very precise clock signal and we call that a pixel clock so every every rising edge of the pixel clock we will be sending one pixel from the video source uh, but if you look at vga standard the clock is not sent to the monitor we are sending only the 
video signal and the synchronization signal the clock is not sent because uh, there is a historic reason for that again as i mentioned before this was used for crt monitors initially which is a pure analog implementation so the clock was not required uh, these signals they were directly applied to some some vertical and horizontal places so the clock didn't play any role there so that's why still we are not sending the clock but our modern monitors you you know like uh, they can adjust with different resolution you connect a 1080 he will go to 1080 resolution you go to uh, 720 he will automatically switch to 720p etc so modern monitors they are much more intelligent because they can analyze these uh, incoming signals and based on the duration of the signals and the frequency of these signals these three signals it can automatically find out what is the resolution of the incoming video so it's very important who is transmitting the video he should strictly adhere to this particular frequency now that frequency depends upon at what resolution and at what frame rate you are sending the video for example uh, we will be implementing a 1080p interface on uh, z port so if you look at 1080p these are the timing requirement okay so uh, there are 19 20 horizontal pixels as we have seen before now in addition to that we have this uh, synchronization uh, signal coming which has a front porch sync and back porch so if you look all together each line in the display there will be 2200 pixel duration out of that 1920 is the actual uh, in video data remaining duration is used for synchronization so similarly for vertical also uh, after every 1080 uh, lines you need a vertical sync and uh, that's what you have 1080 in addition to that these are the timing requirement for the vertical synchronization so total you have uh, 1125 lines per frame out of that 1080 is the real one and remaining are for synchronization so if i look at one frame there are 1125 times 2200 that many pixel duration and if i am running at 60 hertz i will have total 1125 times 2200 times 60 which is 148.5 megahertz so my pixel clock should be 148.5 megahertz i should be sending video at uh, this frequency so this we need to keep in mind okay so this is the actual uh, vga interface from the z board schematic i just wanted to show you uh, because as we mentioned before fpgs they are pure digital circuit uh, most part let me review it because nowadays there are some analog parts also so how are we generating this analog vga signal the video signal from digital this is achieved through register lattice okay so you can see uh, he is using four bits for each color component rgb and uh, here we have horizontal and vertical synchronization signals and these are connected to a kind of register ladder so if you look at the register ladder you can see the res register uh, you can see the resistor values are like 5 10 1k 2k 4k right you can see like it's keep on incrementing and uh, if you apply the superposition uh, principle you will see the final voltage here will be like a weight sum of this uh, bits so this will be ls bit and this will be ms bit so this has the highest resistance value this has the lowest resistance value the ms bit so if you if you do a superposition at this point it will be a weight sum of this and if you look at the res resistor values they are like going in two's power so it will be like uh, uh, converting a binary number to decimal that's the effect which is going to come here that's how we are achieving this digital to analog conversion so uh we are going to use a IP core from Silinx to generate this uh, video signal that is called an Silinx XE for stream video out. Again, you will find it in the Silinx IP core directory. So what this IP does is he will combine the incoming video signal 
and uh, the synchronization signals together and he will send it out to our display so on the left you can see there is a axis stream slave interface so we need to provide the video signal here okay we need to give the video signal here and he also gets the timing information means when the horizontal synchronization when the vertical synchronization should come from another ip and he will combine them and he will send it out now when you are using this slave interface uh, you have to use some additional signal we usually have valid ready and data those three we have always used in addition to that he has a last and user signals also now how these signals should be used so this uh, the user is mapped to another signal this is i have taken from the data sheet so the t user is same as sof signal here which stands for start of frame and t last is same as eol signal here end of line signal here so when you are giving a video signal what you should do is when you send the first pixel of the frame okay this sof signal should remain high for one clock okay that is why it is called start of frame now after that each time you finish sending a line so remember this is start of frame but this one each time you send uh, a line you need to make this signal high for one clock end of line so if you are using 1080p after sending every line you need to make this signal high okay but uh, only after sending 1080 lines you need to make this sof signal high so that's what we are going to do okay now along with that as i mentioned uh, this ip he needs information about horizontal sync vertical sync those signals are given by another ip called video timing controller so it's very simple to use this ip you just have to specify what resolution you need and you need to give that pixel clock which we just calculated he will automatically give this h sync uh, v sync signals to our stream ip so he will combine all those things and he will send out so here is the video data coming out again you will notice it's a 24 bit 8 bits per color channel but practically here it's only 4 bits so we'll be taking the lower 4 bits out of this 8 bits and we'll be sending out this much is the background information uh, now we will go ahead and start the system design so i'm starting a new project Let's call it VGA interface. Guess I am directly starting a block design. Let's call it VGA system. So, in this first project, uh, my aim is a very simple design. We just want to display some kind of test pattern on our monitor just to make sure our IP calls are working and we understand how they work. Okay, so that's why I'm directly starting a block design. So as I mentioned before, we are aiming for a 1080 uh, VGA interface. So the clock frequency is 148.5 megahertz. And for this design, I am purely depending upon the PL part. I am not involving the processor in this design because I just wanted to test my IP core. Okay, so uh, again, if you remember, uh, Zinc on Z board, it is getting a clock signal from the Y9 pin, which is 100 megahertz. So we need to somehow convert this 100 megahertz into 148.5. Uh, that is done with the help of uh, some internal circuitry you can either use a PLL or you can use an MMCM mix mode clock manager so either way you need to choose a clock wizard IP code from here so whenever you need to generate clock uh, or you need to modify the frequency in PL this is the best way okay 
so this is the IP let's double click it so okay so clocking option MMCM you can choose either of them uh, PLLs they make you a better performance in terms of jitter but uh, it is okay so you just have to give what is the frequency of your info clock it's written 100 megahertz and that is the case obviously it's 100 megahertz so keep it as such now let's go to output clock we need 148.5 okay so that is the requested clock frequency and IP is saying he can actually generate 148.5 from 100 megahertz clock okay so that looks good and 50 percent is the duty cycle so this guy it, there is a reset signal which is used for resetting it now the clock generator when you give the clock initially the output clock will not immediately come because there are some internal circuitry which has to uh, do some locking mechanism some phase synchronization so it will take some time for the clock out to come out at the beginning but once the clock out comes out, it, it will continuously come. Okay, So this lock signal is basically saying whether the output clock is locked to the input clock and whether the output clock frequency is stable or not. Okay, So for simplicity, I can remove these ports actually, reset and clock. And we just have our clock in here and we just have the clock out here. We feed 100 megahertz here. Here we get 148.5 megahertz. Okay now there's a connection automation and you can connect clock into system clock okay since he knows like uh, this is that board this will be automatically connected to the y9 pin even if you don't do a pin constraint but uh, later we will do it okay so we have the clock here now let's bring our ip that we discussed xc4 stream to video xc4 stream video out similarly there is an IP called uh, video into XC4 that you can use when you are interfacing some camera uh, maybe later we will do it okay so this is the IP so we need to give the clock signal we need to give the reset signal and we need to give the clock enable signal things like that okay so let's keep it here along with that let's also bring the timing controller so video timing controller okay so this is the other ip which is generating that synchronization signals okay so let's go ahead and double click this uh, timing controller and uh, there is an xc light interface if you want to change some parameters at runtime uh, from the processor we are not planning to use a processor so you can just unclick it and uh, this is the maximum uh, clocks per line this basically decides the maximum resolution that will be supported so 1080 this is more than that so it's perfectly fine and uh, this ip it can generate uh, synchronization signals as well as it can detect so in our case we just want to generate the signal so you can again unclick uh, the enable detection option now here you have to specify the resolution okay so we are planning for 1080 so already a uh, lot of resolutions are predefined if you choose 1080 he will automatically fill these values like uh, 1920 that is the horizontal and 1080 that's the vertical and the other parameters like your front porch back porch sync width etc he fills everything automatically now if you have a very custom resolution that's also possible your own resolution provided that you have a monitor which supports that kind of resolution and you can choose custom and you can specify all those parameters okay so we are keeping 1080 itself that is a standard resolution and that's it so you need to do these many configurations and just say okay so that's done so this is where the synchronization output comes you can see h-sync v-sync 
these are the two interesting things for us there are other signals also horizontal blank vertical blank things like that so these signals we have to give to the v timing in of this ip because he's also taking the same signals okay looks fine and there is a connection automation coming now for connecting the clock okay so we can connect this output clock to all of them we will do it we can use automation okay so same clock it got connected to this one he also instantiated an ip for generating a synchronized reset signal okay so this clock is going here and he will generate a reset signal which is synchronous to this signal and uh, that is applied here now this ip go again remember when you are using uh, the ps part also this signal this ip is automatically included and the reset which will be used by this IP is provided by the processor. Again, this time I'm not planning to use the processor. So this reset should be coming from external world. Okay, so we have this EXT reset and it should be an active low reset. And he's saying like, okay, uh, he, you can connect it outside. Okay, so he connected, let me just rename it. Instead of reset underscore RT, let's just call it uh, reset okay so that should come from external world uh, we may connect it to one of the slides which is uh, in order to provide some reset so this is active reset active low reset so same way we need to give clock to this ip also he is also going to work at the same clock frequency now the good thing about this ip is uh, it can work in asynchronous mode that means the timing generator and the actual video signal they can come at two different frequencies so what he does is he has a fifo internally here you can basically configure how big the fifo should be the video signal he will initially store in that fifo then he will take the synchronization signals from here then he will uh, read from that fifo and combine it using the synchronization signal and he will send it out now if you're working in asynchronous mode uh, there will be more resource utilization because he has to do or clock synchronization things like that so what we'll do we will run at uh, complete synchronous mode that means this ip will also run at uh, same frequency 148.5 okay so he should run at least at 148.5 uh, you can make it run above 148.5 it will still work the the internal fifo will take care of everything so there is a reset signal here also so let's connect that signal also here okay now there is an output from this ip vtgce stands for video timing generator clock enable so that signal you need to connect here gen clock enable because this ip he may wants to sometimes stop this timing controller. He may wants to sometimes start this timing controller. Those things are achieved through this signal. Okay, so this signal he will assert low if he want to stop him to generate uh, synchronization signals. Only if the signal is high, this guy will be giving out the synchronization signal. So during simulation, we will see like uh, why that is important. Now <clears throat> there are some clock enable signals here. Video input output control enable signal here so although there are bubbles at the beginning of these signals they are all active high signal okay so if you keep them low none of these ips will work you should keep them high okay even if you keep them unconnected i guess it will work but it will be a good idea to constantly drive high on those signals so i'm going and choose the constant IP. It will give me a constant value. And let's make that constant as one. Yeah, it is one. So we will go ahead and connect that here. This clock enable here and here. Okay. So that's also done. Now here is the signals coming out. Fine. So we have 
H sync and V sync, horizontal and vertical sync that we have to connect externally because that should go to the external connector. So make external and uh, make external. Okay, so they are going out. Now this signal, it's a 24-bit signal, okay, 23 down to 0. But remember, I have already shown you on Z board, the VGA, it is only 4 bits. So out of this 24, 8 is for R, 8 is for G, 8 is for B. The problem if if you just make it external, all this 24 will be made external signal. That means you have to give pin constraint for all 24 bits. But uh, uh, we have pin constraint only for 12 pins. Okay, so instead of doing it like that, what we'll have to do is we have to separate uh, 4, 4, 4 from this 8, 8, 8 and only connect them externally. So that's what I'm going to do next. So if you have a large bus and if you want to take a portion of that bus, we have an IP call for that. It is called the slice IP. So last time I have shown you the concat IP, which is used for combining uh, signals and make a bigger bus. And this slice IP is used for breaking a bigger bus into smaller buses. So again, internally, these IPs, they don't have any logic. Uh, it's just combining wires or breaking wires into multiple buses. So I will go ahead and I will bring this slice IP, this one. So, so here you can specify what is the width of the input. We are getting a 24 wide input. Out of that, uh, I am choosing the lower four bits. Okay, we down to zero. That is the lower four bits. So. In this IP, the lower eight, they are representing R, then G, and uh, then B, RGB. And uh, among this lower eight, only four are connected externally. Okay, so I will connect it here, and now I will make this external. So let's just rename it. Let's call it. Uh, VGA underscore R so that we can easily identify it. The same way we need to do it for G and B also. So let's make copy paste it and make external and this is. G and this is from 11 down to 8, the so four lower bits of next byte. And if let's copy paste again, This is VGA B. So you can rename the pins like this, okay? And you can even rename your IP instance names also if you wish. This one is 19 down to 16. Again, four bits. Yeah, so that part is also done. Now the only thing that is remaining is uh, basically giving the video signal. So this is where we have to apply the video signal. So as I mentioned before here you will give the video data. Along with that you need to give valid as well as this uh, user as well as uh, the last signal which are representing start of frame, SOF and end of line, EOL signals. Now in the IP core there is a uh, IP called video 
test generator i think uh, test video pattern generator okay this ip if you include it this one so this ip is actually generated from vivado hls that's what it is it is showing it is written in hls then it will be converted into vidlog so this one if you see uh, it will match with this interface and you can directly interface it the only thing is uh, depending upon vivado version uh, you may need a separate license for using this ip code not everyone uh, will be able to use it another thing is this ip will be controlled by a processor so we'll have to include the processor to control it or we have to write another another state machine kind of thing which can control this ip because it has a you can see this is axi4 interface so there should be some other master who is actually controlling this, this pattern generator so what we will do is we will generate uh, our own small ip which can generate that uh, vertical color vertical color pattern on our monitor to to test our ip okay so that uh, we will do in the next tutorial in this tutorial we have completed everything except connecting the video source here the the ip which generates some video signal okay so that we'll do in next tutorial thank you